This is Namibia, the home of two and a half year old Tokolos, a Jack Russell Terrier named after the equally strange creature of Namibian legends. A tokolos is a mean little beast that people use to break into banks. A tokolos is a small creature with a big head that people use to cast magic spells. People use a tokolos to scare others and to put spells on them. Tokolos lives up to his name, and he has an unusual job for a male dog. Tokolos is a surrogate mother to big cats like these young cheetahs, a job that wasn't on Marley's van der Merwe's mind when she got him. I got Tokolos two years ago, and uh, I didn't get him to raise animals, just uh, for a companion and as a dog, as a friend. The changing circumstances in Namibia make Tokolos's job necessary. Here the wild animals used to roam free. But Namibia is now mainly farmland, and farmers have the right to protect their livestock by killing troublesome wild animals. When the big cats are killed, orphans are often left behind. Orphans too young to survive on their own without a mother. Most of them are problem animals. Mom's been shot and yeah, then we get the babies and we raise them. And that's where Tokolos comes in. Tokolos lives on harness. Harness is not a zoo, it's a rehabilitation center for wild animals who need care. Harness began with one rescued monkey. That was 24 years ago, when it was a cattle farm. Now the cattle are gone. And a variety of wild and domestic animals have the run of what used to be grazing land. Marlies's parents began Harnas. It's still a family operation, now run by Marlies, along with Tokolos. When Tokolos first arrived on Harnas, Marlies introduced her new pet to life in the enclosed areas. Then it was out onto the dry savanna, with animals well enough to need exercise in unconfined areas. And that's where Marlies began to notice Tokolos's mothering instincts. Most big cats are active at night, but not cheetahs. And Tokolos soon found himself being followed by a litter of young cheetahs, just as if he was their mother. And when the Jack Russell Terrier and Tokolos sent him exploring everything in sight, the young cats imitated him as if he was their mother. Slowly and mysteriously, that's just what Tokolos transformed himself into. Without any real training, he took on the role of a surrogate mom. Tokolos doesn't replace a natural mother, but his lessons and basic social skills are necessary. I think he's doing a very good job because he teaches them manners and um, so it's, it's good. You, lo you already can see that he's the dominant one of the group. So they have a lot of respect for him. And so he's doing a good job. Otherwise they wouldn't let him 
in the group. Being a mother is difficult enough. Being a surrogate mother to another species is even more taxing. His job is to teach the manners. If they annoy him too much, bite him too much, he has to bite them. So they have to learn. If I say stop and I bite you, it's stopped. There's a bit of a comparison towards what mummies would have done, and that is to have order and there's rules and regulations in the group. And I think that is what Tokolos try to teach them when he bites them and keep them on their spot. Okay, it's good. Yeah. Because Tokolos can work with the large cats, he has another completely different job. Harness is a not-for-profit organization. When public relations pictures are required, Tokolos is there to line up the animals for their shots. It's a job tough little Tokolos is good at, and it helps support the foundation. Tokolos' job also takes him to schools with Marlies. Tokolos helps me also not only with the animals, but going out to schools or agriculture shows. And we go out with the younger animals. He lets them feel more comfortable. Tokolos' presence makes it easier for the children to accept live wild animals they've never seen this close. I know that we have a lot of critics against letting kids touch the animals, but if you touch and learn in your life and grow up with this feeling that you've touched it and then you go and shoot it one day, you're not going to do it. There are other dogs at Harness, dogs that even the lions don't mess with. But the dogs don't frighten Tokolos. He's Macho Mom, ready to take on anything. I don't know what he's thinking, but even big dogs he wants to bite. So I think he's in a way thinking that if I can play with a leopard, I can play with anything else. <laughs> Just as life on Harnas seems to be relaxing a bit, a problem arrives for Marlies. In fact, a number of tiny problems. A litter of orphaned leopards. Once again, Tokolos turns out to be a natural mom. His day begins by cleaning the baby leopards all over as Marlies bottle feeds them. The licking stimulates all of the baby's bodily functions. He's supposed to clean the baby's mouth and also lick their bums. Because if you don't lick them or just don't wash them, they won't do their thing, so they will explode. So he's got an important job there. And so it makes a difference. It makes a difference with him. I think we've got the best jobs we can ever ask for because we have a relaxed job. We're together the whole time and we have a relaxing job going out with wild animals and play with them. So we have a lot of fun every day. And if we can make a difference with one cheetah or four cheetahs, we get out of nature and their mom's been shot and we raise them and a the dog raise them and we as humans raise them and they like us. And we can make this difference with four cheetahs surviving in, in Namibia. We will do it. The big cats of Africa are lucky to have Tokolos. 
he's a good mother. In fact, an exceptional one. Not only is he a male mom, but he can raise many species, lions, cheetahs, and leopards. And as adults, these cats will live in safety in the wilderness areas of the Harnas Sanctuary, thanks to Tokulos. Barkley is a four-year-old golden retriever, and he's always in training for his job. Some of his training is dangerous. Some of his training is simply unpleasant. Few dogs will climb ladders, and even fewer dogs trained to repel down buildings. Barkley also trains on the ground at disaster sites with his partner and trainer, Flynn Lamont. His major function along with mine is the location of people that are trapped. He just tells me where those people are. Barkley is a disaster dog. He's a member of the technical rescue team with the Vancouver Fire Department. He trains for search and rescue work non-stop. Should catastrophe strike, I must be prepared. Barkley is always in top form and ready to work. Devastation doesn't send a messenger. But if any type of disaster hits, Barkley is trained to find victims. Barkley works in Vancouver. Luckily, his rescue skills haven't been needed there yet. But the city does have the foresight to employ this disaster dog. Barkley never takes a break from daily training. He stays in shape because the call could come at any time. The British Columbia coast has been shaken by a number of small quakes, so Barkley concentrates on his earthquake training. Scientists predict a strong quake will hit the coast of British Columbia, but no one can say when. Make yourself comfortable, and I'll go down the other end and send the dog off on his way. So just find a spot in here. He'd be valuable in pretty much any city, but particularly here, I guess, because we've got um, we have earthquake problems. We haven't had one in quite a number of years, but they say there is one coming. Uh, we have lots of high rises. We have lots of confined spaces. Okay, ready? Search for him. Here, the threat of an earthquake is taken very seriously. And a special area has been set up to duplicate the aftermath. This is where Barkley trains. Training is a game for Barkley, with a toy as his reward. He's tr been trained over the years that all humans are fun, all humans carry toys, and potentially all humans have treats for him. So he's basically looking for a human because that human has his toy. You too hot? Yeah. Give it up. Barkley's willingness to train anywhere is the result of his love for Flynn. We have a great bond. That's one of the things that you get with a dog like this is you get a really good working bond, a really good buddy bond. I trust him, he trusts me.
definitely not a natural environment for a dog to be raised and lowered. Traditionally, they have really poor depth perception. They don't like walking on things they can see through because it throws them off. They can't really understand that. Barkley doesn't mind dangling off of different places. The practicality of being able to raise and lower a dog would be particularly valuable if we're dealing with structural collapse. To actually raise and lower him uh, in a controlled situation is a valuable exercise for everybody. Should the situation ever present itself, we've now prepared for that eventual day. Back at the fire station, Barkley's just one of the guys. So he gets to do what they do, with dog perks thrown in. Like eating. Relaxing. More eating. And sleeping. Should disaster strike, Barkley will be there as part of the technical rescue team. He's well trained, he's ready to go, he's ready to be put into action. Um, we're just waiting for that eventual day to happen. That was a busy day, huh? The people of Vancouver may not know how long and hard Barkley trains for them, but there may come a day when they're glad he does. Smuggling is the plague of every international airport. Canada has put together a force to stop the flow of illegal goods across borders. Employees have been specially trained to catch criminals with their contraband as they try to slip through customs. Today, the best detective the Canadians have is on duty. Rookie. The Beagle works the Mirabelle Airport beat in Montreal. If it's on the list, rookies knows we'll find it. <laughs> when rookie heads for your bag and then puts a paw on it, May as well give up. Hello. Hi. Is this your suitcase here? Yeah, sir? it is. Yeah. Okay. Can you have your custom card, please? Sure. Now you're on your way to a thorough investigation. Nothing to declare. No. Nothing to declare at all. Okay, we'll just have a quick look. Okay. Bombs and drugs aren't on rookie's mind Excuse or nose. Oops. That's a sausage? That's a meat product, sir? Yeah, no, I had the sausage in there, yeah. Okay. He's after your sausages. Sausage. Your fruits. Good boy. Your flowers. The plant cutting? Yeah. Okay. These are the innocent seeming items that can bring new plant diseases Good into a country, boy. new killer illnesses to a population. We're using a dog for the simple reason that the danger of importing a uh, foreign pest or disease is very, very as high well in as, Canada. Uh, you are subject to have a fine of up to two hundred dollars for not declaring on your on your on your import card. When it detects an agricultural odor, whether it be dairy or or animal or vegetable or or plants, he is trained to sit and he and he puts his paw where he detected the odor. Rookie is trained to find agricultural products, yes. and he has cited your suitcase as a potential agricultural product that you bring into the country. Yeah. He will get a little food reward, and then he, he goes on and carries on and, and looks for more suspects. 
rookie's lucky in his work. Turning criminals in is just a game for him, a game with a reward. Beagles always work for food. They'll do anything for food. Good boy. Come on. The reason why the Canadian Food Inspection Agency chose beagles was because of the fact these are hunting dogs. Their keen sense of smell makes them ideal dogs to do this type of work. Move on. They are small dogs. They are happy-go-lucky dogs. Their character is non-aggressive. They just love to work around the passengers and around the public. High five. High five. High five. Dance. Good boys. Dance. Roll. Good boy, roll, roll. Good boy, hop. Good boy, sit down. I would roll compare way. Rookie to a laid-back type Perry Como style, where uh, nothing faces him. Um, he's got one thing on his mind. Uh, he's a dedicated employee, and he just loves to do his work. Find it. Good scene. He doesn't understand that he's finding a bird or that he's finding 20 pounds of sausage. For him, the most important thing is that he's done a good job. He's seen his master, myself, very excited at a find that he has done. For Rookie, the total pro, it's all in a day's work.